Friends, a very young girl of 13 came to me today with corneal perforation and I repaired the perforated site today itself. Let us see the surgical steps. The ocular surface has been thoroughly washed with BSS. Few drops of moxifloxacin has been applied over the wound. And now I'm making a side boot at the limbus. My plan is to form the antechamber nicely with viscoelastic substance. And I'm using uh, HPMC, that is hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose. Here it is. I'm injecting HPMC to make the anterior chamber deep. The margin of the pupil was attached to the perforated site and by pressure of the viscoelastic substance it has gone back. There may be some strands, some inflammatory strands between the pupillary margin and the perforated site. So I'm sweeping a Sinsky hook from one side to the other side and I find that iris is free. Now I have taken moxifloxacin in a 2cc syringe and I am hydrating the wound margin with this antibiotic with moxifloxacin. Specifically this is Vigamox from Alcon. Now I am suturing the wound. This is 10 O nylon suture and this is the first bite. Before tying this suture, first suture, I put another bite. So this is the second bite. And now I'm tying the first suture. In this case, I have applied sutures in a fashion of 2, 1, 1. That is, first I take two loops, then this loop, one loop, and lastly, this is the final loop. So it's a 2 1 1 suture. The threads are trimmed near the knot. There's it. The threads are trimmed. Now this knot is buried into corneal stroma. If the knot remains on the surface, on the epithelial surface of the cornea, it gives rise to a lot of irritation. But if the knots are buried and 10 O nylon sutures can be easily buried into the corneal stroma. So whenever you repair a corneal injury, the best suture till now is 10 O nylon suture and always bury the knot into the corneal stroma. This is the second suture. It has been tied and the threads are now being trimmed near the knot. And the knot is buried into corneal stroma. 
now this is the third byte at this time I hold at the limbus not at the owned margin hold at the limbus I go at around 70 to 80 percent depth of the cornea and this is the third suture again two one one when you tie the knot the ocular tension should be optimum should not be very high it should not be very low now when this knot is being buried the third knot I realized that there is some resistance and I could figure out that there is some cotton fiber which has stuck into the knot. So what I do is I pull the cotton fibers but it didn't come out totally so I bring the knot out remove all the cotton fibers and bury the knot on the other side that's it now I can find that one more suture is required hold the eyeball again at the limbus and put this fourth and final suture in this case the corneal injuries are usually repaired by postgraduate students in government hospitals this video will help you the postgraduate students to do the job very nicely I believe so that's it this is the fourth knot the threads are trimmed close to the knot and the knot is buried that's it so the wound has been repaired but there is a lot of viscoelastic substance in the anterior chamber I want to thoroughly remove this viscoelastic substance and a thorough lavage of the anterior chamber is necessary because if there is any infecting agent in the anterior chamber it should be washed out So I am slowly, steadily irrigating and aspirating the anti-chamber. The viscoelastic substance is coming out gradually. The lens appears okay I make another side port in this side to thoroughly wash the anterior chamber
if there is any infecting agent in the antechamber should be thoroughly washed out. I go at around 5 o'clock I can see some inflammatory fib fibrinous material and I remove it. That's it. So the entire chamber has been thoroughly cleaned. Now I am focusing on the posterior aspect of the lens and I can find these lines. So the patient is going to develop a roseate shaped cataract very soon. This already has taken a rosette shape. So the antechamber has been thoroughly lavaged. These are the lines on the posterior subcapsular area. The patient's parents have been told already before taking the case for surgery that the patient may develop cataract and she will need another surgery. Removal of cataract and a good quality intraocular lens has to be implanted inside the eye. Now I inject a little bit of air and underneath this air I inject a bit of moxifloxacin. I call it moxilavage. Inject moxifloxacin leave it for some time, hydrate the side boards the side boards the right side port has been hydrated and this is the final wash under higher magnification and I can see that this is the anti-capsule of the lens, it is clean. And all the viscoelastic substance, the viscous strands have come out. Now the antechamber tends to be shallow. So I hydrate this side port. The right side port has already been hydrated before this final wash under higher magnification. And now I take a 23 gauge cannula to put BSS in the antechamber. And this is the final stage. Hope this video will help you in your repairing of corneal injuries. Thank you very much for your attention.